Hi, I'm Darren Pepper. Welcome to the Leaning into Leadership podcast, the podcast dedicated to today's hardworking leader. Join me every Sunday for leadership insight, inspiration, and a little pep talk to keep you rolling down your road to awesome. Hello, my friends. Welcome into episode 71 of the Leaning into Leadership podcast. So this is a special edition. Um, In fact, the entire month of May 2023 is going to be loaded with special editions. Because in May of 2023, the Leaning into Leadership podcast is all about aspiring and rising leaders. Yes, you might be that leader who is just getting started moving from the classroom into a school leadership role, or maybe you're a leader who is ascending from an assistant principal position into a principal role or principal role to a district level role, or even into a superintendency. If that fits you, folks, this entire month is going to be all about you. We are going to have so much fun and we're going to get it started right after this. Leaders, you know, teachers and administrators don't agree on everything, but one thing they do agree on is we need more full-time classroom teachers leading professional development. That's where my friends at Peer Driven PD come in. They work with some of the best teachers in the country, and they document the instructional strategies and work they do in their own classrooms, and then share that content with schools everywhere. Imagine your teachers learning from other incredible teachers across the country who are gifted and passionate about driving student achievement. Imagine your own superstar teachers being videoed on your campus by Peer Driven PD, and then that video being shared on the platform for their colleagues and the rest of the country to see. Now, just so you know, Mike Alpert, who's the founder of the company, was actually a guest here on the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. Check out episode 49. Mike's a former teacher and administrator, and he's worked in schools across the country. He understands the need for engaging PD that teachers really appreciate. Look, I've seen this work firsthand. It's unique, it's interesting, and it's just what your teachers need if they want more from their PD. It's kind of like a masterclass, but for teachers. Visit peerdrivenpd.com and request a quote. Tell them the Leaning Into Leadership podcast sent you, and they'll give you free trial access so you can check out all their content and decide if it's right for you. Again, that's peerdrivenpd.com. Tell them the Leaning Into Leadership podcast sent you. So to kick off this month, I've been thinking a lot about when I made that very first step into school leadership. So I was a classroom teacher for 11 years, and the final six of those I spent as a high school science teacher. I was a head basketball coach. I was the head boys tennis coach. And originally, I didn't think I necessarily wanted to be an administrator. You know, I had gone and got my master's degree in ed leadership, but I wasn't sure I was going to use it. Um, In a lot of ways, to be honest with you, it was almost like it was a foot race between will I finish that or will I become a head basketball coach first? Uh, When I first stepped into education, honestly, that was one of my goals was I wanted to be a head basketball coach. And ultimately, I was able to achieve that. And it did happen, of course, before becoming a school leader. But a funny thing happened along the way. My wife and I had a daughter. And all of a sudden, the focus on being a coach wasn't as important. Um, It really took so much of my time away from my wife and, at the time, my very young Uh, my very young daughter. And I decided I did want to go ahead and start to pursue that leadership position. We were in an interesting position. Uh, We were living in the state of Arizona, which is not our home. We loved it, but it's not our home. Um, Having grown up in Wyoming, my wife graduated in Wyoming. All of our family at the time was living in Wyoming. We wanted to get back closer to home. We wanted our daughter to grow up around, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents and that kind of thing. So we started looking at positions back in my home state of Wyoming. It was really interesting. I actually heard the word no well before I heard the word yes when applying for those uh, first opportunities, uh, those assistant principal roles. When I was finishing my master's degree, I actually reached out to a friend And I had seen that the school she was working at had an assistant principal position open and reached out. She connected me with the principal. We had a great conversation, but it never went any further than that. Um, I did not get an interview. Um, I hadn't yet finished my master's degree. I was really close, but um, I didn't ultimately land the position. The following year, 
my wife and I had another discussion and said, look, you know, if we want to do this, let's start to get serious about it. And I started looking specifically at middle and high schools in Wyoming. Um, having been a both middle and high school teacher, I felt like that might be a good fit. And lo and behold, the high school directly across the street from where my in-laws live in Cheyenne, Wyoming, had a position that came open. And I really thought, folks, I really thought that was going to be the position. Um, yeah, it turns out I was wrong. Um, we went to Wyoming on spring break. I turned in all of my paperwork to apply for the job. I even went and grabbed a little bit of time with the principal, sat down, had a conversation, introduced myself, thought that was a good move. You know, hey, at least he, you know, he can see my face. He knows who I am. And uh, I had already applied for, for a couple other positions in the state. Later that day, after going and meeting that principal, I'm sitting at my in-law's house playing cribbage with my wife's grandfather who, by the way, is maybe, he was maybe one of the greatest cribbage players of all time. Um, you never got a chance against him. So as I'm taking my, my normal uh, cribbage beating from Ray, my phone rings. And it's a Wyoming number. And I answer the phone, and it's the principal of the high school that ultimately I would accept my first position at. It was really interesting because he said, you know, hey, we... Uh, we would really love to have you in for an interview. Uh, we understand you're in the state right now and wondered if there's a chance you could come over here on Friday. Well, we were on spring break, folks. I did not have the appropriate clothing. I actually had to go and buy a suit and tie and shoes and socks. I mean, the whole bit, folks. So I wore a brand new suit into this interview on a Friday, and I really thought it was a practice interview. Um, it wasn't necessarily the job I wanted. Remember, I want the job across the street. But by the time the interview was over, and by the time the tour of the school was over, folks, I was all in. I wanted to be there so bad. And I really felt like the interview went well. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. About a week later, my phone rings. I just happened to be on my prep, and my phone rings, and it's the principal of that high school, Randy Wendling. And Randy called, and he said, Darren, I just want to let you know that We've gone through the process, and we really would like to offer you that position. Folks, I said yes immediately. I hadn't talked to my wife. I obviously hadn't talked to my, you know, my principal. I mean, they knew I was, I was looking, but, man, I said yes instantly. I was so excited. My wife was actually the principal secretary at our school, at the high school where I worked and coached. And I ran down there, and I said, hey, come in here, come in here. We went in the conference room, and I told her I was offered the position. And she's like, what did you say? I took the job, and she was so excited. Um, our daughter at the time was five, about to be six, and her big thing was, you know, we had to vote, although she called it boating. Um, we had to vote to decide whether or not we would be w moving back to Wyoming, and the three of us voted, and it was unanimous, and ultimately ended up accepting that position, and it was really an interesting experience for me. You know, that first position for me was high school discipline and attendance. And, and folks, if you are one of those folks who are looking to jump in, don't think you're going to necessarily land exactly the position you want right away. Now, you might want to hold out, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you really feel like, man, I've got to get in, I've got to get my foot in the door, don't be afraid to take a position like that. Because the reality is there's so much movement in the principal ranks the odds are pretty good that you won't be in that position very long. I served two years in that role. And at the end of my second year, both of the other two assistant principals landed principal's jobs. I had my pick of either the activities and athletics director position or the curriculum and instruction program, assistant principal position. And that's ultimately the one I took. You never know. So, so don't hesitate. So as I said earlier, this month, we're going to talk about all of these different pieces. 
not not only just hey you're taking that first step but maybe maybe you're ascending um, i'll tell the story next week of moving from being the assistant principal into the principal role i'll talk a little bit about how that interview went talk a little bit about my preparation for it and how ultimately i landed that position and also i'll share with you a little bit more than what i've shared here on the podcast before about some of my struggles when i first became a building level principal later in the month We'll have conversations with folks who have ascended out of the principal position and into district level work and even into superintendencies. Um, I have a superintendent who's a first year superintendent who's going to be joining us later this month. She's actually been on the podcast before. We're going to talk a little bit more about that first year's experience. I have an interview coming in a couple of weeks from a brand new first year high school principal. Oh my goodness, our interview was so wonderful. He's in a really small school in rural Nebraska. I also have a really interesting conversation later this month with one of the principals that I'm currently coaching, a gentleman here in the Omaha area who is a brand, year, brand new first year principal, transitioning from being an athletic director into being a principal. And his challenges have been very interesting. And that particular interview is going to essentially be a coaching call where he and I sit down and we're going to talk about some of the challenges, some of the areas where he's grown. And some of the areas he wants to continue to get better as he continues in his principal career. This is going to be a wonderful month, folks. I'm really excited about it. I hope you are as well. Lots of great information coming your way. And I'm excited that you've chosen to join me here on the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. Get out there. Have a road to awesome day. Thank you for listening to the Leaning Into Leadership podcast brought to you by Road to Awesome. Don't forget, click subscribe, give a review, and share this with somebody who might also enjoy leaning into leadership.